Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to the fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe. It's 9 p.m. in the east, 6 p.m. central time. I wanted to get this out a little earlier, but had other stuff to do and had to get out of the office a little bit. So let's get right to it. We have a lot to talk about in this one. Six different topics will review the December 8th storm, the December 10th storm today, and my busted forecast, some lessons learned, talk about the Saturday East Coast low, the potential for a big East Coast storm, and then December 18th and 19th, an event a lot of people overlooking, and then the possible severe Arctic outbreak as we head towards Christmas. So let's get right to it. We'll talk about the Sunday event first. Now, this was the European model from November 27th, folks at EarthSat. And you can see the trough axis was coming down this way. But so obviously, if the energy is coming down here, the atmosphere has to react by pushing this up here. The problem is that look how strong the lines are here. See how strong the lines are? And what that meant is that the front was going to get pushed down into Virginia and then stall there. And that's exactly what happened. This is the GFS ensemble for the 27th of November. And again, this is for December 8th and 9th. And, and this was a very strong signal that there was going to be overrunning in a stalled front over the deep south. And we could see it. Look at this here, 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 here. Maybe something in this area as well. And then uh, maybe something down here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight of the 12. Very strong signal from the GFS. This was the extended GFS from way back in the 27 that's showing the front stalled and then some sort of a moderate cold air damming over Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky. This was the European. This came out December 1st, and a lot of people thought this was the beginning of a new pattern change. There were some energy forecasters talking about it. I know they thought that over Capital Gang there was discussion that it was going to stay warm until December 12th of, uh, and no big East Coast storms. And the reason why they were thinking this was because the operational GFS on December 1st excuse me, operationally European, was dropping the big cold air down here. See that? See this big high? Look at that baby. All the way down to Texas. Extreme cold. And then, of course, extreme warmth on the other side. But as I showed you back here, you could see that the top of the, the, this front was going to be blasted away. That wasn't going to be the case. And let me show you. You'll see it a little bit more here in a second. And sure enough, the new run on December 8th, okay, in the... Uh, that came out Saturday evening, early Sunday morning, showed the front, in fact, going, being pushed southward, okay, from the Arctic High. So we didn't have the front going up. We didn't have this anymore. This was not happening. We now had this. And that's the important feature here. So that's why the pattern was we can see the, uh, the overrunning beginning to shift and set up here. Now, this is the extended European from uh, December 1st, valid for, I guess, uh, the 8th and the 9th. Uh, it's for December 9th. And again, there was the southeast ridge. You can clearly see it. What was happening is, look how these are just blowing right through. See how, see how the lines all packed very tightly here? So thus, the cold front comes through, and then it stalls. The bottom part stalls here, and the front of it gets pushed way out into here. And that's exactly what happened. And that's where the overrunning was. This was Sunday's system. This was today's system, those white lines. You see it? Okay, good. This was the GFS ensemble. Very impressive, showing very nice snow here, way far out in time, uh, nine, ten days out. Um, consistently showing a lot of overrunning and uh, significant snow and ice. And this was a GFS from, uh, I guess this is um, actually from December uh, 1st, yes. And again, you can see cold air damming, very clear, a lot of snow and ice. You can see this very clearly right in here. You can see the scale, you know, snow and the ice so right up in this whole area. And again, very impressive right in here. There's the high coming, keeping the cold, and cold air down. I'm not sure why people thought this was not going to be a big deal. This was looked like a significant event to me. I mean, not a huge storm, but definitely looks something. This is the European model here for December uh, 9th. And again, this is valid as of uh, December uh, 2nd. And we can clearly see this is the uh, ice line, 32 degree line. And this is the zero line at 850 millibars. So all this up in here is snow, heavy snow in northern Virginia, central Maryland. And that turned out to be a pretty good forecast. A ton of ice in here in the Shenandoah Valley. And the ice line was close to Richmond, but not quite. And that turned out to be a pretty darn good forecast for eight days out. This is the GFS, which showed a lot of snow in Roanoke, Lynchburg, and Richmond in one of its runs on December 1st or 2nd. This was nonsense, not going to happen, because the pattern didn't support it. You don't get big snowstorms. You get ice storms, but not snowstorms uh, for this sort of pattern, unless maybe it's in January, February, but not in December. This was the European 
uh, 108 hours, four and a half days. And again, not much change here, I got to tell you. Again, here's the ice line, see it? Down there, uh, near Richmond, up to D.C. And oh, this is the snow line. This is all heavy ice in the Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont and to Central Virginia, snow to the north. And if we look at that in large, you can see that rain right in here, and there's all the ice and snow up in here. Very, very consistent on the European model. It was not fooled at all. Now, the NAM had problems. The NAM on Sunday, uh, excuse me, on December 7th, showed a consistent band, as you can see here, of a significant uh, uh, precipitation. And we can uh, arrow it in here, coming up this way, this way, this way, close to D.C. But the 18Z NAM, what does it do? It drops this all south. See that? Pulls it out. This stays the same, but it actually drops it towards Richmond. And that got people excited. Ooh, maybe it's going to happen in Richmond. It didn't, but that's Richmond for you. And my forecast, the last call, I had four to eight inches of snow in the valley, Shenandoah Valley, northwest Virginia, two to four in central Maryland, up towards D.C. and Baltimore, the, salt, the suburbs. And that was a pretty good forecast. Of course, it snowed much more than that in central Maryland. And I did not do well over in Philly or South Jersey and I, and, or northern Delaware. I busted all in here terribly, but a lot of people did. But I did pretty good here and here and here. So it wasn't a bad forecast, but I missed up in Philly. And the ice, I wanted to get the clue with the ice here. Of course, one of the reasons it snowed so heavily in Philly and South Jersey is that it came in much faster, much faster in this way. And, of course, it was still cold in this whole area, so you got snow. If the precip had come in a little later, remember the precip was supposed to come in at the beginning of the football games, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. People were talking about what it was going to be like driving to the football games. It was already snowing heavily when the football game started, so it obviously started much, much earlier, and the cold air was a lot stronger, and that's why it was a lot more snow. All right, here's the, the ice storm. You could see the very cold temperatures in the Shenandoah Valley. The precip came up. As you can see, this is Sunday evening at 6.50, coming up from Alabama and Tennessee. And as soon as it crosses this line, you can see the red line right here. That's when the ice was. That's when the ice began. The freezing rain began. And then two hours later, there's the heavy rain and ice storm, sleet storm, for portions of the Piedmont and the Shenandoah Valley. Okay, let's look at today's event. Uh, GFS did pretty good. Last night, GFS actually had a pretty good snow map. Um, no, I should have followed that instead. The uh, NAM was all over the place. Here's the WRF. It had actually a snow. Uh, I, this was uh, uh, yesterday on Monday down towards Richmond and the suburbs there. That was ridiculous. It had heavy snow in the valley, which was pretty good. Not much over the peat, over the coastal areas. And again, because of the bay effect. And this actually turned out to be pretty accurate. The bay effect is an issue here in December. The closeness to the water. That and we can see the difference here again. The GFS. Now the GFS blew this because here, the GFS had a huge amount of snow, heavy snow for DC and, and, and Baltimore, six inches or more. The uh, European, I mean the, the NAM was shoving it southward a little bit, again fairly close to Richmond, into the valley, um, and not much in New York City. So uh, that turned out to be a pretty good forecast. Uh, this turned out to be wrong. So each one of these models got something right. Each of them got wrong. None did a great job. Again, this was the uh, NAM showing the big snow down the Richmond area. Again, you can see it was ridiculous. And you can see the precip going back and forth here. The NAM consistently trying uh, shoved everything up to the north um, and then get going back to the south again. It had just it was just way too wet for the precipitation. I just had too much precipitation. That's the whole event. This was the NAM from last night, and it dropped a huge snowstorm over Charlottesville, over to Fredericksburg. That turned out to be completely wrong. Again, the NAM shifted at the last second. And you can see the RAP model here showing the strong vertical velocities, the uh, rapid update model here. And you can see um, and you can see these, uh, these little black lines, and they rep represent a lot of very strong vertical velocity in this whole area right up in here. And... Uh, that was true, except the problem is that there was not enough low-level cold air. So it didn't do a bad job, but it missed the cold air here. And here is the NAM saying the so, same sort of thing. It had all the strong vertical velocities, as you can see, over central Virginia, into Maryland, and then over southern New Jersey. So for that reason, I shifted the precipitation south. You can see the uh, high resolution of the NAM here showing the strongest vertical velocities in central Virginia and Charlottesville, and that turned out to be the wrong solution. My first guess was not bad. Three to six, I should have stuck with it. Only had one inch in Richmond around the grassy surfaces, if that. And one to two around Charlottesville. I should have stuck with that. This would have been a good, good forecast. But instead, I shifted and bought the NAM completely, and I busted horribly. That 48 was not needed. It was a big mistake. Should not have put it. So the lessons learned. 
First, fast-moving weather systems, whether the rain or snow, you should always favor the low end of your forecast amounts. So if you're thinking 2 to 4, 3 to 6, if it's really a fast-moving system, go 2 to 4. If you're thinking 4 to 8 or 6 to 12, go 4 to 8 if it's a really fast-moving system. East Coast, December winter weather, you have to watch those water temperatures. And both the Sunday storm, the, the wedge, the cold air broke down much closer as you got to the bay much faster as you got closer to the bay, and also with uh, today's, in, again, the snow, as you approach D.C. and Baltimore towards the bay area, was much less intense. The low-level warming got in, and it made a big difference for the snow mounts there. So, again, don't finesse. What's the difference between 3 to 6 and 4 to 8? Most people don't care. And also, avoid the models with flip-flop back and forth. They're kind of risky, like, like the NAM did. All right, let's talk about the December 15th event. Well, this is the European from today. It has the low here. It's a big giant Arctic high, as you can see right here. And then it has a nice snowstorm. Even in this case, the operational run, you can see the snow line is inland. But once it bombs out east of Cape Cod, it pulls the cold air in. So the cities like New York, maybe Philly, Boston, go back over to snow. And it shows significant snow, some areas over a foot. Well, the problem with that is that it's not really supported. This is the European. You can see the big snow amounts as very nicely as you can see it, even over northwest Virginia. But I, th I think this is... Um, well, wrong, and I'm going to explain to you why. I don't buy this at this time. Well, there are problems with this idea. First, um, the part here, here is the you can see the European ensemble. The trough axis is negative way too far to the west. The trough axis has gone negative, as you can see here, uh, over, uh, over the Ohio Valley, and that's too far to the west. That's got to be negative here, and that's not. There's no 50-50 low. The NAO is positive. The Arctic Oscillation is positive. This looks like an inland storm, as far as I, I can see. Maybe a Midwest storm, but definitely an inland Appalachian storm. In fact, that's what the GFS is showing. Again, look at the trough. See how this is similar to that. Yep. So the GFS has a coastal low, but it develops way too late. And the warm air, as you can see, surges north. Here's the high, and the warm air comes in this way, as you can see. See the warm air coming up? Boom, boom, boom. So it goes over pretty quickly over the coastal areas, even over the mountains, according to the GFS. This is the GFS ensemble. And again, the coastal low takes over way too late. The rain snow line gets pushed. Here's the rain snow line. Let me show it to you. The thick blue line way up in here, north of Boston, way north of New York City, up by Harrisburg. You know, it's just it's an, it's a it's a rainstorm, mountain snowstorm, rainstorm on the GFS ensemble. This is the Canadian model, and again, notice where the, where's the phasing occurring? Where is the phasing occurring? Here, here, not on the east coast. Here, and as a result, the primary gets pulled in. The secondary takes over too late. The warm air surges northward, as you can see, and it's rain. It starts off with snow, and it goes to rain. So, and then and then behind that, what happens behind that one? Well, that big storm. And it is going to be a big storm. I'm not doubting that. It's just the, the, the system setup is not very good for an East Coast winter storm. But it moves up into southeastern Canada, and it becomes a 50-50 low for the first time this year. That means the next piece of energy coming down out of central Canada has to swing around it, you see? This feature here is, is forcing this feature to go down like this. Okay? It's got to go around it. Okay? Sure enough, that's exactly what happens. And this is, now this is December 17th, Tuesday. This is Wednesday. Look at that trough. It's gone neutral. Okay, it's rapidly amplifying, and then by the 19th, yes, it goes bombs off the coast, and it, hit, it could hit Virginia and Maryland with a significant snow. It could, and uh, that's just one possibility. Then beyond that, December 22nd, again, look what we have here. This is very similar to what we just saw. We have another southeast ridge here. There's your trough coming down this way, cold air. And look, the front is going to stall again, folks, over the, over the, over the mid-Atlantic states. And some sort of energy is going to form here and come up the front. That's exactly what we see happening. Sure enough, look what's happened. Now that front is now stalled down here. Somewhere along in these brown lines, the front is stalled. And there's some points of energy down in here. This is another overrunning situation. And look, folks, it's Christmas. Yes, there could be some Christmas weather on the East Coast. Uh, so I'll have to wait and see if that's actually the case. But I think there's a good possibility of that. And then finally, I want to remind you, that's what the pattern looked like. Again, very similar to the um, current set setup. So, and you can see the Arctic outbreak coming on Christmas Day. Look at this. Wow, very impressive. Warm on the East Coast, that's probably overdone. And then it cools off dramatically when the cold air comes east. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.